How do you be a more effective junior developer? Are you looking for the ways to increase your career potential in that role? Are you trying to thrive in that environment? Let's talk about it. So either you're trying to become a junior developer and get that first job in tech, or you've landed that first job in tech, which congratulations, you did it. And you're trying to now get past that beginner level state. I'm gonna give you the exact same steps that I used and that I've used with many other people to get past that initial stage of being a junior developer and to get in a position where you're able to take control of your code, your business situations, and your interactions with coworkers. Number one, understand the problem. What are they asking you to do in this work ticket or this task? How are you going to actually do that? One big point is clarification leads to effective concentration. Meaning, don't just go saying, okay, cool, and now you're sitting at your desk trying to wrap your mind around the fact that you now have to create this thing that you don't know much about, and because you were slightly intimidated, you didn't ask the necessary questions to develop a very concise and effective product. Effective products make you an effective developer. So if you're developing solutions that actually solve bigger problems and if it solves the problem that you're tasked with correctly, that is a that is a viable business solution that makes you valuable. But if you're too afraid to ask that clarifying question, when they come to you later on in that day when that task should be done and you're still twiddling your thumb trying to figure things out, now not only do you not look great in that situation, but because of your lack of understanding of what the ticket even required, what you came up with probably isn't the solution they were looking for. So an example would be, they want you to create a button. So when this button is clicked, what is the end result going to happen? And what is gonna happen because of that? Is this button gonna be connected to an endpoint? Is this button gonna be receiving some information or sending some information? Is what is gonna trigger and then what's happening after that trigger? So that way you can prepare yourself, you can actually make sure that you're not future proofing yourself and creating more work down the road. Again, we need to understand why it's happening so that way we can create an effective solution. Don't be afraid to ask a clarifying question just to make sure you understand exactly what they're asking you. If we're not connected on social media, connect with me. You'll find those links right below that like button. And if you hit that, hey, I won't be mad. Hit that like button for me. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Number two, pseudocode transforms into real code. Pseudocode is essentially writing in plain English what you want this thing to do. It allows you to create those steps and you break it down saying, okay, at step one, I need this. Step two, I need this. Step three, I need this. And it allows you to critically think about the problem that you're breaking down. And now that you understand how the steps are coinciding with each other, you can now say, well, how do I get from step one to step two? And then you could start saying, well, a for loop could do this or an if statement or conditional, or let me check and reference this one thing. That now creates that pathway and it allows you to say, my whole goal this entire time was to have a button that when pressed, it sent user information. Well, step one would be, I need this button. Step two would be, when this button is clicked, what event is being actually triggered? Am I clicking an endpoint? Am I sending a post signal? Step three would then be, okay, I've sent this information, but where did I send it? It shouldn't just be send, it's sending where? What is it exactly going to? Is it going to a database? Is it going into another field? Is it going to another table? Where, where is that information going? And now you can effectively work towards where you need to be. But by using pseudocode first, you're allowing yourself to critically think and break that problem down. And by writing in plain English, you're making it so that you have a plan and you're also thinking in a way to where it's like, okay, do I have any loose ends? Is this going to leave an opening somewhere? That plain English allows you to think in an abstract, broader way, and then you could start detailing in the finer points. That detailing in is where your effective measurements are going, and that's how your pseudocode starts transforming into real code, and you start breaking it down. That is a huge key to being a developer. By breaking that problem down into smaller problems, that is when you're effectively becoming a much better developer, but you're also having the ability to problem solve in an effective way. That is key here. Number three, Google. We all use Google. I'm gonna use Google to the end of my career. Don't be afraid of Google. Google's your best friend. Google is the way that we find our answers. Google's the way we find out solutions. Google's the way we can find out so many things, but also don't be afraid of using it. You're going to use it all the time. I don't think there's necessarily a chance to over Google something. 
because I like knowing several different ways to do things, but also I like reading other people's solutions towards an idea. It may trigger and inspire my own idea, even if it's not the same. So it's perfectly fine to Google something, start reading code based on what you've done, and I guarantee you it's gonna help you on the long run. Number four, unit testing. I feel like I talk about unit testing all the time. Testing is a big vital portion of development. Not only do you need to use testing, you need to understand how you're using that test. You need to make sure that you're not changing the values in the test just to make it pass. Find out if a test is failing, find out why. Don't just say, well, let me change what it's asking for just to get this test to go through. That defeats the purpose of testing then, then don't test. Test-driven development works. TDD works. Many companies use test-driven development. It will save you in the long run, but you want that because it's gonna save you headaches. The last thing you wanna do is create some code, let it push through testing, and it makes its way through, and because you don't write any particular unit test, and it makes its way to prod, and now it's not working, you don't want that phone call saying, hey, prod is down because you did something. You don't want that phone call saying, uh, Danny, yeah, I know it's two o'clock in the morning, but production is down. Well, why is production down? I don't know, but the last thing in production was the code you pushed, so you may wanna take a look at that. You don't want that headache, man. You don't want it. Trust me, you don't want that. Do your unit testing effectively, Find out exactly what it is that it's making that test fail and solve that problem. Don't just change your test to give you the output solution that you're looking for. Actually utilize it. I guarantee you in the long run, you're going to thank yourself and you're going to be very, very happy with the results of that. Number five, don't stay stuck for too long. Don't stay stuck for too long. I know sometimes we want to push through a problem. We want to get somewhere. If you've been stuck on a problem for half a day or many hours, and you know the company is wanting you to turn out some tickets, and you're still stuck on that same thing, and you haven't reached out, you're not doing yourself a favor because if the boss comes and says, hey, what have you been doing all day? Well, I've been stuck on the same thing. Well, who did you reach out to? Nobody. That is not the kind of situation you want to be in. It won't take you any time to go to a member on your team or even in during your stand-up to say, Hey, I have a problem with XYZ. I've done ABC and it yielded DEF results, which is not what we're looking for. Right now, I'm trying GHI. I'm not having luck. Does anybody have a solution or a possible fix for me to try? The key points here is number one, you're effectively communicating, which is a big skill you need to have as a developer anyway. But number two, all of the developers on the team now know what you've been stuck on this entire time. Number three, I was going to do this, but now that it is. Number three, by telling them what you've already tried, it already starts ruling out for them to say the exact same thing. And it gives them a, an understanding of this, is worked, this hasn't worked, this hasn't worked, this hasn't worked. Now it lets them also think in pseudocode way of an effective solution that can help you out. And with that, with you being a junior, them being seniors, and them knowing the code base, they can probably steer you in the right direction that you need to be. And I guarantee you, doing something like that will yield far more results than you just stammering away at your desk, hiding out and not really producing anything. So this is the way to combat that. Don't stay stuck for too long. Stay stuck, push through, but if you can't get through, it's better for you to reach out in one way or another to try and get to where you need to be. Now I could talk about stuff like this all day, but I want you to check out my other videos. So check out my other videos and I will see you on the next one. I really like this shirt.